Jeff Wilson here with Nicole Desenia. Nicole, uh, congratulations on your last win out in Spain. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm so happy. This fight was was so great. Like winning this title meant a lot for me. So I'm really happy now. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm very happy for what I'm seeing and the in the way that you're getting through your career. And it's the first time we had an opportunity to talk. And I know it hasn't been easy during COVID. You're in Italy right now. I was listening to uh Resinera, Resinera, the the song that Robbie uh Conchetti uh signed up during COVID to get through it. Um you guys were affected more before anybody knew anything about the disease. What was it like in Italy during those times, and and how did you how did you continue to train? So it was really hard because I was supposed to fight in March, um, the week that actually the lockdown was declared. I was uh, waterloading. It was Wednesday, and I was supposed to fight on a Saturday. And on Wednesday, they locked us. They said the flights were canceled, so I couldn't go to Spain. Fight was canceled. Was rescheduled. So the lockdown started while I was like what loading and it's probably the worst time ever because you you switch from being in camp training every day to doing nothing at home. So I kept training for the first month. I was in a really good shape. So I didn't want to lose my cardio, to lose my strength. So I tried to keep training, but it was so frustrating and it got to a point where we had no idea how long was it gonna last. So I've had my mom holding mitts for me. Like I had to put like shin guards on a tree in my garden and I sparred a tree for quite a month, <laughs> for, for a big part of a month. So I was, yeah, working out like water bottles and just using my dog leash as a tier X. My mom holding meats for me. It was really frustrating. I, I can't I imagine. Like, how, are, how are her hands? If I was going to train pads with my mom, I, I imagine you kick harder than I do. And uh, there's probably times she throw up her hands. I'm not like, doing okay, this. You can just beat me up with the sticks and I will just uh, learn how to uh, learn my defense. So I gave her like pool noodles and she was like using those to beat me up. So I was like, hey, it's time of your life. You can just like beat me up as much as you want. I just got to train my defense. Worked pretty well. <laughs> I love that example so much. Thanks for sharing it. Now there's this new organization in Spain and you are uh, the champion now. You just came back. Talk to me about that organization. And it, it sounds like it's the first female event in Europe. Um, in January, I just came back from Jackson Wing in it and, I, and I've arrived in Italy just to apply for my visa to move there. And as soon as I got in Italy, a couple of friends of mine in Spain told me that there was going to be this huge like female only card. Um, and I was like, I really want to be part of it. If there's going to be like a female only event in Europe, I want to be part of it. I want to be part of the first female only card here. So, so I got invited from Fran Montier, who's the Spanish Dana White. And he invited me to be part of this card. For how things evolved, uh, the card, um, the card changed a lot. A lot of the fights fell through during uh, pandemic. So when they rescheduled for uh, half September for mid September, most of the fights were not going to happen anyways. My opponent pulled out. So again, the fight was rescheduled for October and, and they found, found me a new opponent. The main event fight fell through. So my fight got moved to main event. So I actually got to be the main event first strawway title fight for, for this, this amazing promotion. So winning the first strawway title on, on AFL Valkyries has been, has been a really, really big thing for me. It's something I really, I really cared about. So, so yeah, I'm happy now. I'm a happy Con champ. Congratulations. It's a great win. And as we see MMA continue to grow in the globe, we start to see better and better and better fighters coming from everywhere. Hey, listen, uh, some of your fans may also know you as Eden Von Hell in this awesome group called Suicide Girls. And, and the name might be a little deceiving, but what they do is they really def redefine beauty by accentuating um, models with piercings and tattoos. And uh, they're fantastic. How did, you, uh, how did you get involved with them? When I was 18 years old, I saw this punk rock version of Playboy and I, and I found it pretty awesome because I was like, these girls are portraying their beauty, their unique kind of beauty in their own terms, like with their own standards. So I went on a website and I checked what, what was that about and, and I really liked it. And I've emailed 
uh, email to them and and they, they told me they had a photographer I was gonna be in Italy so I met I met up with this girl and and she was so awesome we had a really nice weekend together and we shot my first photo shoot and they've accepted immediately so I've started modeling for them uh 15 years ago so I've been modeling yeah for for 15 years and I I would have never thought that like being five feet three I would have I would have been a model and it has been just awesome because just like fighting with fighting i met so many girls that are like me same thing went for suicide girls i met a lot of like weird um like out of the box kind of kind of girls so so i have a lot of friends all around the globe i've managed to improve my english my spanish learn a lot of languages meet a lot of people travel a lot it has been an overall like really good experience so so yeah i'm really i'm really proud of being of being part of suicide girls I just love the way they're redefining it and seeing uh, seeing beauty in, in women in different ways. It's fantastic. Yeah. Hey, listen, let's get down to it here. Uh, you had an interesting change in walkout music. Talk to me a little bit about your, your walkout songs now compared to your walkout songs in the past. And I, when I turned pro, my first walkout song was Spice Up Your Life. I really love that song. Like I've been a big Spice Girl fan since, since I was a kid. So walking inside my first crowded arena with spice up your life going loud with all the crowd chanting it it was pretty fun so i've used it for both my uh flyweight fights and when i've changed weight class i've decided to uh to use another walking songs and for that time for the mood and for the feelings i was experiencing at the moment the most appropriate choice was sweet dreams from marilyn manson and i went on a five fights winning streak with that song so i was like Sweet dreams are made of this. Who had a mind to disagree? So, so it it made sense. It made a lot of sense. It may still make sense. I love it. I love both those songs. I think they're fantastic. I really like them. And if anybody, and I think the the two songs like pretty much sum up my personality. I'm like, yeah, the goth Spice Girl. So, so yeah, the mix of the two is makes a lot of sense for me <laughs> goth spice girl i love it uh, anybody you want to thank for uh, your incredible rise to that championship belt in, in spain i want to thank my coaches luca vido and andrea el portoricano because they have been like so amazing like they helped me a lot and vanessa rico and her team in spain they've been my my family in spain so i'm happy because now i have one family in albuquerque one family in italy and one family in spain um, Nicole, thank you for taking the time. I look forward to see you continue to defend that title and to see you again in the UFC. And uh, I look forward to talking soon. Let's talk soon. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Okay.